What is up everybody? Welcome to part two of our native narrative deep dive in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. In part one, we covered the background information of the Indian Wars and growing concerns that the Wapiti would once again be relocated to another reservation due to supposed oil under their land. We also discussed growing unrest between the elders of the tribe who want to handle their situation with diplomacy and the younger Wapiti people who are tired of oppression and want to fight for their rights. Now that you're brought up to speed, let's go ahead and roll the intro and begin part two of our native narrative deep dive. If you remember the last thing we left off with in part one was Arthur heading to the Wapiti Indian Reservation to speak with Rainsfall at the request of Charles Smith. You don't sound very well. I'm not. I'm, I think I'm dying. And I hope you find peace. I don't know too much about peace. Apparently not. Did you have fun with my son, the impetuous prince? I believe you went on a raid with him. I'm sorry. I suppose I lack the grandeur of a conventional king. I don't know too many kings. <laughs> Colonel Favors. He has already exacted some measure of revenge for the raid. Two women were assaulted by his men. Um, I'm very sorry about all of this. Yes. Sometimes the correct path... The bravest path is the least obvious, and also the gentlest. I'm... I'm a great disappointment to my son. Your son seems to want a war. My son thinks there is glory in death. Maybe he's right, but for me, I saw death being handed out so freely by the most foolish of men, I never could equate it with victory. Well... Your friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, he talks a lot. I don't know him, but my son is easily lit. I'm not sure I get you. Uh, well, perhaps we could go for a ride. I'm an old man. My whole life I have tried to bring peace. Then maybe you can take pity on my plight. Please, it won't take long. <coughs> Sir! Mm. I'm glad I caught you, sir. Captain Monroe, do you know my friend, Mr. Morgan? No, sir. I don't have the pleasure. Arthur Morgan. It's an honor, sir. How can I help you, Captain? I was just in San Denis. I spoke with the mayor. It's not good news, I'm afraid. May I ride with you for a little? Of course. During this meeting with Rainsfall on the reservation, we learn of the retaliation of Colonel Favors, assaulting two Wapiti women, giving us some insight into the type of person Colonel Favors is. We are also introduced to Captain Monroe, Captain Monroe is an ally of the Wapiti, and one of the few soldiers in the army that is actually fighting for them. However, as Monroe said, he does not come bringing good news for the residents of the reservation. What is this news, Captain Monroe? Yes, sir. As I mentioned, I did speak again with the mayor and the Bureau of Indian Affairs in Saint Denis at length. But regrettably, it appears the oil company has already received approval to move forward with drilling on the reservation's land. I suppose there's much. So what does that mean for us now? I'm not sure just yet. I didn't get the impression anything would be happening for a few months. I'm very sorry, sir. I did everything I could. I know, Captain. And I assure you I will continue to do as much as I can. Mr. Morgan, would you have time to help me at all? I would rather certain actions were taken by friends outside the tribe. Sure, I can help. That's good news. Thank you. Come meet me on the reservation whenever you can. The drilling for oil on the reservation has been approved. Although action will not occur for a few months, the Wapiti tribe will have to move once again. On this ride, Captain Monroe will also ask Arthur if he can help and accomplish things that Monroe does not want the tribe members to be involved in. After Arthur agrees to this deal, Monroe rides off and Arthur and Rainsfall continue a scenic ride in which Rainsfall discloses more information about both Captain Favors as well as life on the reservation. Things that bad on the reservation? Yes, this conflict with Colonel Favors and his regiment at Fort Wallace continues to worsen. Many of the elders are sick, 
And the young feel that any compromise is an admittance of defeat. Well, we ain't done much to calm the situation. But I have to continue to seek to resolve matters through peaceful negotiation. War would be futile. Your people are lucky to have you. I'm not so sure about that. The army aren't all bad men, just as my people aren't all good. But this colonel favors. He walks an old line. He's obstinate and he hates Monroe. I just hope between us we can work this out. This ride gives a great amount of context to the bigger picture occurring. The tribe are sick and weakening due to lack of supplies, and young people view any compromise as losing, so their patience wears thin with the action or inaction of Rainsfall. On top of all that, Colonel Favors seems to hate Monroe, the one ally that the Wapiti seem to have in the army. All these details will come to a head later. However, as Rainsfall and Arthur approach the spiritual site, they discover that the site has been ransacked and artifacts of the site stolen, meaning that war is the only outcome unless Arthur can retrieve the items without the tribe learning of the transgression. Oh, there they are. These brave men. Some of Colonel Favor's men. They must have been the ones who did this. Are you surprised this happened? Not at all. But... But I hope we were past this. Well, you got land they want. Land with oil. They moved us here. They've taken everything we had. I signed three treaties myself, and they've broken each one. Now they've taken the last hope. Now my people are going to want a war. A war they can't win. Not if I get it back. After retrieving the items for Rain's fall, he hopes that having the items back can ease tensions to some degree. Here, I, uh, I got your things, I, I think. Yes, thank you. I'm very sorry about this. Even sacred things are only things. People, the heart, matter more. I should not have let you do this for me. But perhaps it will stop a bigger massacre. With these, maybe I can calm my people. It is this interaction that cements just who Rain's fall is. He is a chief wanting peace, knowing that if he does not remain compliant, his tribe will cease to exist. However, while Rain's fall wants peace, it seems the narrative being pushed against his people is not in his favor. As a newspaper that can be found after this mission reads as follows. Tensions high, fears of return to Indian war. Army and Amberino on edge. Fort Wallace requests more troops. The management of the reservation is a cumbersome business, and the fact that issues occasionally arise is not the fault of the administration or Congress. Money is appropriated quite liberally and honestly for the care of the Indian people. The children are taught something of hygiene, fed and clothed, and given shelter. Yet still the Indians contaminate their own water and end up spreading typhoid to all and sundry. The Indian problem will not solve itself. The Crow, Shoshone, Cheyenne, and even the Navajo have signed treaties and been moved to very generous reservations, taking to agricultural life and the tenets of Christianity. However, those contained at the Wapiti Indian Reservation remain warlike, spurred on by their chief and his son. Military officials stationed at the nearby Fort Wallace warn that armed hostilities are a distinct possibility. These Indians acting in conjunction and harmony with government officials could prosper and become friends to the Americans who have tamed the lands from New York to California instead exhibiting savagery, ingratitude, and surly behavior. The treacherous Indians falsely accuse mistreatment. In the light of all the tensions reported in the region, Washington has sent another military delegation to try and reduce the tension. This article deliberately misrepresents the situation and paints the Wapiti as the aggressors of this narrative, rather than victims of circumstance at the mercy of oil tycoons in the army. At this time, we can return back to the reservation to check on Captain Monroe and see just what Arthur can help him with that he did not want the Wapiti being involved in. Captain Monroe. Of course. Chief's gone out trying to find medications. It's quite a business. Yes. Thought we were through with all of this. Well, we are, mostly. Colonel Favors seems to think the natives have broken some promise they never made, and apparently he's punishing them by withholding vaccines sent down by the federal government. Really? 
I was supposed to oversee the administration of the vaccines. Now I hear the wagon's been diverted. Why would he do such a thing? To be honest, I truly don't know. They say he didn't have a very good war, so maybe he's trying to start another one. Is that what you think? I'm trying to find out. And he knows I'm trying to find out. He'd love to provoke me almost as much as he'd love to provoke these poor bastards. Meaning? Meaning that despite the fact that I think he's a horse's ass, he knows I think that. So we're just stuck here trying to make the best of things. This is the best of things. Children dying of diseases. No. This is awful. Where is this wagon? Where can we find it? I can show you. It's supposed to be heading to a pediatric coming up through Valentine, but it's been diverted south instead. Come on, Captain Monroe. From this interaction, we learn that Colonel Favors is withholding vaccines from the Wapiti people and that he is instigating war with the Wapiti in order to save his personal reputation. Even worse, Favors' personal war against the Wapiti to save his career seems to have corrupted his regiment. I was sent down from the north after all the news of unrest in the region. But I think my presence might be making things worse. What do you mean? I worry he's taking some of these actions more to protect himself now. He can incite more retaliation, maybe he can prove a stronger defense. Well, like destroying that shrine. Yes, and taking their horses. I mean, I don't know if he personally sanctioned any of this or not. This is the other problem. There's a culture now in his regiment. The rot has traveled down the trunk. Naturally, as the mission continues, Arthur steals medicine for Monroe and is able to return the supplies back to their reservation in order for the Wapiti to receive the vaccines that were rightfully theirs. Now that we've helped Rains fall and Captain Monroe, it's time to return to Dutch and just see how his influence over Eagle Flies has grown. We meet up with them as they prepare to ambush and humiliate an army patrol as retaliation for the actions against the Wapiti. While Eagle Flies views this as a power tactic, Dutch informs Arthur that this is all part of a plan to use the Wapiti to distract the government to allow for their gang to escape. Besides, it's perfect. People will see these boys, they won't notice us, and they'll think we're gone. Everyone will blame everything on the Indian problem, and we'll disappear up the river. During this mission, while it initially goes well, it turns out the army is unwilling to be humiliated and sends reinforcements. By the end of this battle against the army, Eagle Flies is captured and Dutch and Arthur narrowly escape. After the smoke clears, the Wapiti, with the assistance of Dutch Vanderlyn, has attacked the army. Any diplomatic solutions that Rain's fall was working on, and any action Monroe was attempting to slow, would likely stand no chance after this stunt. Shit has hit the fan. This is true for both the Wapiti and their struggle, as well as Arthur and the struggles of his gang. Shortly after this, Rain's fall approaches Arthur and Charles asking for assistance, as Rain's fall believes he has a real opportunity for peace, and a meeting with Colonel Favors has been set. Though, due to the nature of Favors, Arthur and Charles are asked to accompany to be supporters that are outsiders of the tribe, and in case more tensions rise. I just hope Colonel Favors can be reasoned with. I am not asking for very much, but when our people are sick and hungry, and we find our medicine and supplies are being deliberately withheld, how can we not view that as something personal? When they destroy our sacred sites, how can I convince Eagle Flies and the others that they shouldn't fight back? Maybe that's part of the reason they're doing these things. Because they want you to fight. To be able to say, look, you see how these savages behave? Perhaps. Thank you for helping Captain Monroe to retrieve those vaccines, Arthur. He will be at the meeting and is one person who knows the true situation, at least. I still have hope that we can come to an agreement. After this short ride, it is here we finally get to meet Colonel, Colonel Favors. Favors. Captain Monroe, we come in peace. Hello again. Who are these two? They're uh, friends of my people. Hmm. Interesting looking fellows. Yeah, they won't cause any trouble. Well, I should hope not. Yeah. Listen, Mr. Um, <coughs> Chief. Yes, uh, Mr. I can't say that silly name, what is it? In English, they call me Rain's Fall. Yes, yes, I'm mine. Uh, I'm sure they do. Listen, we're all Americans here, and we want an outcome. But quite frankly, quite frankly, I am confused. 
Your men are little more than criminals, in my opinion. <coughs> Keep breaking peace treaties we've made, causing disturbances in everybody's lives. But I pride myself on being a gentleman. Really, I do. But there are limits. So, let me be very... Are you okay, man? Someone. Jackson, take him away. Where was I? Your gentleman with limits? Are you being facetious, sir? Come this way, buddy. I said, are you being facetious, Captain Monroe? No, sir, I am not. Chief Reigns. That's, uh, <gasps> Reigns' fault. Exactly. Yeah. Chief Reigns, the thing it's is... quite a cough. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the entire conversation as Arthur suffers a coughing episode due to the progression of his tuberculosis. However, from what can be seen, Favor shows no empathy for Reigns' fault and his people, unwilling to refer to him by his name, English or otherwise. After being escorted away from the meeting, we see that Favor's efforts to instigate the OPD fool no one, and his men claim that Favors is planning to arrest Monroe on counts of treason. Colonel Favors is doing everything he can to instigate another Indian war. He ransacked their sacred sites and stole artifacts, is withholding valuable supplies such as vaccines and other medicines, and if we recall the wasteful murder of Bison from episode 1, the individual behind hiring the poachers is likely either Favors or Cornwall, as this stunt would frame the OPD as savages and turn the public against the cause of the native people, or the loss of food would aggravate the OPD into retaliation, which would conclude in an Indian war. It is no surprise that Favors accuses Rainsfall and his people of breaking treaty, which Monroe refutes, and as retaliation, Favors moves forward with his plan and accuses Monroe of treason. Yeah, come on. <coughs> Let's go. <coughs> the lands you currently occupy belong to the United States government. Why is this so confusing, sir? Why? Good day, Colonel Favors. Well, that was remarkably unproductive. <clears throat> so, I'm afraid the federal government was quite clear, Colonel, that it wanted peace, and peace for all, and that the treaty had not been broken by anybody. Oh, is that so, sir? And did it want impudence, sir, from a junior officer in public? Was that its plan, too, sir? You insult me. You insult the regiment. Arrest this man. Arrest me? Gross insubordination. Disobeying an order. Treason. Are you mad? You had those vaccines stolen. You disrupted a negotiation. Let him go. This is all getting out of hand. Hi, right. Captain Monroe, let's get out of here. Hi, if I, I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut, amigo. Arthur, Charles, and Monroe are able to evade capture by the army, and for the safety of Monroe, he gets on a train, and the Wapiti lose a great ally to their cause. But that is going to be the end of part two in this four-part series, halfway done already. How exciting. This is likely going to be the biggest episode out of the four, as there's a lot of setup here that we're going to see pay off in episode three. I hope that you're enjoying it. Don't forget to do all the things that everyone begs for at the end of their video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace! <laughs>